on you. Welcome, everybody. Excited you guys are here. And I want to ask one question because we were talking about this webinar title earlier, the word tech stack. Who knows what tech stack means? You only got like 30 seconds to tell me. So the first person that tells me you're going to be, I don't know, I don't know, I'll, I'll, I'll give you something, probably a free webinar next week something but tell me who knows what tech stack means because I was telling Joe I had to look it up okay so nobody yet and oh, we're turning this over uh third ah see Deb look at you tech stack set of softwares local cloud that your organization runs on Deb you're the winner you are the winner I'll see you in the next webinar I'm going to turn this over to Joe and uh, Kyle have a great webinar everybody bye-bye Hi, folks. This is uh, Joe DiGiovanni and Kyle Barkins with uh, TAP Network. We're a partner of TechSoup, and we're super excited about today's webinar. Uh, just some housekeeping uh, to communicate with us during the live event. If you want to um, raise your hand for, for the chat, you can just do so on, on the uh, in the comment box, or you can email uh, learn at techsoup.com. And we're also recording this uh, presentation, and we'll send the deck and the recording over to everyone at the end of the uh, the webinar. All right. So yeah, I'm Joe DiGiovanni. I'm the co-founder of TAP Network. My background is in digital marketing. I've worked on major brands, um, Pepsi, GSK, the MBA, and super excited when we formed TAP Network with my co-partner, founder Kyle, uh, to really take everything that we learned in the, uh, in the corporate world and, and translate it into uh, driving impact for, for nonprofits. So we're a purpose-driven agency. Like I said, my background is in, is in marketing and Kyle, he's uh, our CTO as well as co-founder and chief architect. So we have left brain, right brain going here for, for what we do for our clients and for, uh, for, for TechSoup. So um, just if you guys have any questions during, during this uh, webinar, just put them in the chat box and we'll, we'll answer them at the end or, we can also try to chime in during the presentation as well. Again, just a brief overview of TAP Network. Um, we're a purpose-driven digital transformation agency, like, like I mentioned, and we'll get into all that at the end if, if, if you guys may need some support. So let's get uh, right into it. So today we're going to talk about the key elements of a successful uh, nonprofit website and how to incorporate them into your uh, into your in, into your marketing, into your engagement, your fundraising, and really focus on those three pillars of the tech stack, a CRM, a C customer relation management system, content management system, a CMS, and then also a donation management system. So we'll go through each one of those in detail and then actually look at how do all those pieces integrate uh, together. So let's, let's dig right into it. The three pillars. First thing is first is what what is the tech stack? So as Aretha was uh, asking, it's a collection of software and digital tools, cloud-based that a nonprofit organization can use to support its operations and its mission. The stack part, that's really the digital tool set, the apps, the programs, how they all work together. Sometimes they're automated, sometimes they're it's it's manually integrated, but Basically, what it does, it connects everything to make the organization run smoothly, marketing, operations, sales. And it can really help if you put in the right tools with managing your donations, your events, and communicating with supporters and using that backend database, that stack, so you're not repurposing and, and reinventing the wheel every single time. And then you can track everything and optimize all your systems in, uh, in, in real time. And if you look at, you know, taking a, a step back, if you really look at what, what your nonprofit is doing, if you look at the marketing funnel stages, it's, it's a great place to start. So at the top of the funnel, that's when you're doing social media, you're doing some blogs, which as you get into the middle, so you're, you're driving people through awareness. And then when they come into the website, middle of the funnel, that's, that's where your content really comes in. And then at the end, it's it's the bottom of the funnel. You're converting folks. That's that's your CRM. And then once they actually do get converted and be, 
and, and you get them into your donation platform, that, that's your donation management system. So when you look at a full funnel of what your organization is trying to do, you have your, your CMS, your publishing, your CRM, that's your database, you're converting people along the funnel, and then donations towards the end. So that's just a high level look at all that. And, and here's the three pillars. So we'll go into each one specifically. Great, thanks, Joe. So the first of the pillars um, is really where everything should should ultimately tie back into, and that's your CRM, your customer relationship management system, or uh, you know, in the nonprofit space, we call it a, a constituent relationship management system. But a, a strong database, which is all the tools and technologies that you guys can use to you know improve uh, interaction and engagement with your your existing base, grow interactions and engagements with you know the, the new uh, customers or new supporters that you pull in to make sure that you're, you know, up staying, staying engaged with them based on previous interactions, based on specific information about them, like, you know, certain age ranges, certain demographics, um, certain interests that they might have along the way. And as, you know, as you see these things, as these, these platforms develop and roll out, you're starting to see the ability to use that and use something like an AI tool or uh, an included AI tool in these CRM systems to augment that information as well. So start to, to create groups of, of, um, of different like-minded customers or audiences that you can go out and, and reach and being able to pull that all into one place uh, from everything that you do from marketing, from service, from programs that you might offer allows your, your organization to grow smarter and grow more efficiently um, to serve your, your cause. Just some quick CRM statistics. These are you know probably a year or so old at this point, but 74% um, of organizations say that their CRM helps give them better access to customer data so that they can more effectively engage um, almost all organizations, so 90, 92%, uh, they believe that the CRM is crucial to delivering more meaningful relationships with them. Uh, and then 27% say there's an, they, they've seen an increase in customer retention um, from their organization when, when they start using a CRM. Um, just some ways that the CRM can really help power your, your organization. So the basic, like I started, I say, said was like the contact management. So keep track of the volunteers, donors, companies that you engage with. So get them out of those, those Excel spreadsheets, get them out of those note, notepads on your desktop uh, and really start to be able to manage these better uh, in one, one, one place so that you can track them across the different places. So you can make sure that you're, if you're sending postcards out, you know, you know who you sent a postcard to and what their address is and things like that. Um, if you're sending emails out or engaging them on social media, you're able to track that and and have um, you know relevant relevant interactions and communication with them, as well as internally. So you can say like, let's if Joe and I are are talking to you know to a, a prospect or a customer, it's easy for us to see when did Joe talk to them, when did they come into the system, and what's the next step there, um, just just from the basic contact relationship management stage. Uh, moving that forward into lead management. So as I said, if we're, if we're talking to someone, a prospect, we can see when, when that's, that person in this system is ready to move to that stage and, and what, what they've done so far. So what engagements they've had with us, what interests they've, um, they've raised or that they said they, that are important to them, uh, and then how we can continue to move them through that, that funnel that Joe uh, talked about earlier. Um, something pretty basic, but uh, very important is email management. So if you don't have a, a database, a list of these contacts, you know, who are you going to email? So being able to, to, to write these emails and, and design these emails for those different contacts, those either specific contacts or segmented lists, you know, so donation uh, request emails could go out to a list of, of qualified donors or previous donors. And, you know, at, you know, requests for support could go out to qualified volunteers or previous volunteers. Um, something else a little bit more specific would be something like file and document sharing so that you have an internal place um, to share those files about those contacts within the organization. So think of, you know, event attendance, program participation, things of that nature when someone comes and and join you know, and enrolls in, in your uh, in a program or a service or if you're running a boys and girls club where you're able to see, you know, what which uh which families you you all are impacting, which families have signed up for different uh, different services, different um, after school activities, things like that. CRM is a great place to store all that information and, and make sure you have the most up-to-date um, documents, files, et cetera, for them. 
And then lastly, would be like reporting and analytics. So this is super crucial to the success of an organization, seeing how you've seen contacts grow, seen lists grow, seen donations grow, um, seen the success of your email campaigns, things of that nature, can all be tracked back and tracked into uh, your CRM. So we just, as we go through today, you'll, you'll, you'll hear some suggested tools, some, some industry tools. One, one that we suggest uh, for nonprofits and actually for all organizations would be HubSpot, just because they, are, they really are the leader in this, in this space. They've, um, they've taken a great deal of market share from the big guys like Salesforce uh, and Oracle, NetSuite, things of that nature. They've made it affordable. They've made it effective. They've made it efficient. They, they, they've been built on best practices. And you can really, really span out from um, something like HubSpot where you, you might be sort of pigeonholed in something like Constant Contact um, or MailChimp where you can just do email marketing or just do email and social. Uh, HubSpot takes like a full a full approach at, the, at this, but focused on the customer, focused on the contact. So how do we engage with the contact uh, you know, through, through marketing? How do we uh, drive the contact in, into, our, into our system as a lead uh, through the sales side? And then how do we delight them and engage with them on an ongoing basis through the service aspect of things uh, in this platform. We'll share links to this and some more information on this uh, following this webinar. So why HubSpot? We just kind of talked about that. It's an all-in-one encompassing platform. Everything kind of lives at the hub of this uh, and all based around that CRM. It's scalable, so you can, you can run things like automated workflows to, to update data in, the, in a database to uh, send an automated email out to someone once they've taken a certain action or been in your database after a certain amount of time. Uh, and it really allows you to like manage that data better so it can scale with your organization as you grow, as your contact list grows, um, as your needs grow. Uh, and then, as we said, like the key important piece here would be like the data management and reporting side of things. HubSpot has a lot of that stuff built in out of the box and it makes it really easy for organizations to get set up and running. So they're not spending a bunch of time connecting a bunch of different systems to try to get the information out of it. Uh, it's sort of there when you start uh, with just some customization on what you want to receive reports on. And we also want to make sure that whether it's HubSpot or something else, your CRM and these systems you're looking at are connected and powerful. So like something like HubSpot is going to provide like that unified platform to help you grow. So have all your marketing, your sales, your services, uh, everything in one, one place. So you're not chasing different spreadsheets, logging into different systems, seeing um, data discrepancies. You know, when's the last time I talked to, to Joe in you know, this system? Oh, I see. I actually talked to him more recently in this other system. So you, you want to have relevant context between those. So you can share that between those different teams, actually. So as we said, like if Joe was on the services side and I was on the, the sales side or the, the development side, um, of an organization, keeping that all in one place instead of instead of having it in in separate systems allows you to to keep that context going, uh, and it allows us to to organize things like that customer communication all across the ecosystem. So live chat, um, you know, deals and donations, having conversations with someone, or um, you know, email email like an email series with somebody, uh, and following up with them on like what tasks are ready to be to be done. Great, thanks, Kyle. So next, we want to talk about the content management system. So, like, like, like the title of our of our talk today is the tech stack. So it's important not to have these things exist in silos. So as we're getting our our database uh, pulled together, we also want to really integrate our our content management system. So so what is the CMS? It's a software platform that allows the organization to create, edit, organize, and publish and publish your content uh, without advanced technical knowledge. They used to call it uh, WYSIWYG, what you see is what you get. So when you go into the back end of your website, you can easily create your content as if you were working on a, a Word document um, and then publish it throughout the site. It's user-friendly, it's effective, really great to get content up live and, and, and quick. And you can manage all different versions store all different types of media, video, blogs, news, articles, and things of and things of that nature. Um, and what's really great about it is, well, yeah, so CMS versus website. Um, the CMS, some people call it, you know, you're just your website editor, but but a CMS, once it's integrated into your tech stack, it, it, it becomes a little bit more of that. So imagine all the database information that you have that Kyle mentioned, you know, we have everything that we know about that particular funder, 
And if we can integrate it from a tech stack perspective into your content management system, something like a HubSpot would do, then we know what content they're, they're digesting and reading. So if someone is on the Heart Association website and we see that they're coming in because they're looking at stroke prevention, you'll be able to serve that stroke prevention type content to that person and ultimately get them to, to donate on behalf of, of that particular cause of the Heart Association or volunteer. Likewise, they may be coming to the site because they're interested in nutrition, because they have high blood pressure. So that content is gonna be different, but since we have the tech stack installed and the CRM, we're gonna know that this particular user is interested in a certain amount of type of content. So it'll be personalized and, and progressively, you know, we'll profile them to give them that content. But the first step is to really understand how to use the content management system to easily publish everything. And then from a tech stack perspective, and we'll get into integration is, how do you integrate that? So the content is being personalized for each person in, in your CRM. Why, why an optimized content management system can benefit your nonprofit? Um, well, it really helps the UI, UX, the user uh, usability interface, because if people can absorb and, and read your content better, you're going to show up better in search engines and people are going to be able to really engage in, in your content. And at the end of the day, if your content is not in the right place or being communicated effectively, you're not going to be able to drive those donations and, and engagement. And it's really going to add to the credibility of your website, the thought leadership of your nonprofit. The more content you put out there, the more authentic you are, uh, the better it's going to be. And if you're really getting bogged down trying to publish or code and get this content in manually, it's going to take a long time and it's not going to be connected and, and it'll be disjointed. So having a nice, robust content management system will really make things easier for you and, and for your constituents. Um, next slide. And there, there's a couple of different content management systems out there. If you're just getting started, Wix, super easy to, to get started with. It doesn't have all the robust CRM integration and things of that nature. But if this is your first nonprofit uh, and, you're, and you're just getting started, Wix and Squarespace are, are great. As you become, as you start to grow, we put almost all of our uh, clients on WordPress. WordPress is secure. It has thousands of applications and CMS and CRM plugins that can really help scale your, your nonprofit. And then there's open source content management systems like Drupal and Joomla. Uh, that's more on the enterprise stage, but that really involves a lot of uh, programming and software development and can get very, uh, very sticky. So for most nonprofits, I'd say 90 5% of them, WordPress is probably the best uh, way to go. And, and you have some other options out there too, depending on your budget and, and the scalability of, of, of what you're trying to do. Thoughts about GoDaddy. Let's see. I mean, GoDaddy is, is similar in, in, in nature to Wix. Um, it's a great way to, to, to get started, especially if you, know, you just bought your domain name, you want to get something up there. Um, and, and you maybe you have a big event coming up or something like that, and, and you want to test out your brand. But ultimately, and we'll go into more detail, I, you know, WordPress is likely the way to go as, as you go beyond having your site being mainly brochure-like and then, and then evolving from that. Uh, just to, so everybody understands, Joe just answered a question that was in the chat. He didn't just decide he wanted to say thoughts about GoDaddy. Um, <laughs> yeah. I think guys can't see the chat block. Yep. Someone asked me about GoDaddy. So I was, I was, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll chime in from time to time as we go through this. Uh, so we're not, we're not inundated with a bunch of messages at the end. So you know, feel free to keep those, those questions coming in the chat and we'll, we'll get to them when they're um, relevant. Great. So yeah, selecting the best CMS for your organization. Um, it's got to be user-friendly and easily adoptable into your day-to-day -day activities. If you have very little, uh, you know, programming experience, WordPress, GoDaddy, um, and, and, and Wix and Squarespace, best to go with. Prioritize the ability to add plugins and external integrations if this is needed. WordPress has one of the largest uh, libraries of plugins and have, you know, they each have their own upsides and downsides and, and you'll have to really look at 
do, doing some comparison there. Security is critical. Uh, that you know the programs that we that we just shared have very strong security measures. And you know, consult an ag agency or external resources if you have any 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 questions. And that's that's what we're here for. Yeah, so WordPress, they're, they're really the best for integration and scalability. Like I said, a lot of themes, tools, and plugins, whether you're, you know, it's, 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 a, it's sliders for your photos, video players, integrations for different types of donation platforms. It really is probably the best, you know, tech stack friendly uh, platform out there. And, and it integrates with, like I said, thousands of different um, tools. Which leads us to donation management software, which is one of the most common tools that that you'll want to integrate as as part of the tech stack. Yeah, thanks, Joe. So, uh, pretty sure most of you on this call at this point would understand uh, or know what like a do what the well the importance of donations uh, to an organization, but um, the importance of a donation platform. So you're able to 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 manage um, you know influx of donations, make sure you're tracking all that where it came from, uh, how how to how to grow those. Um, it's really this is this is your key fundraising tool. Uh, it might not be where you where you get all the donations, so everything might not be like you know paid through like a donate button on your website. Um, but this is where you would track all those donations and track all that fundraising, so you can go back and make those those requests uh, in future months, years, whatever uh, at future events. Um, but some of the big benefits of having a donation platform set up are just being. Uh, you know, setting up recurring donations. So how, if you have some automation, you're able to, to say, hey, would you like to, um, you know, can we match this, this this donation from last year? Can we count on you again this year? Um, or even allow your 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 funders to uh, set up like a subscription where the, every year on every year or month or whatever it might be um, on a certain date, we know what we can expect from them. They can just set up that auto pay. Uh, it allows you to manage the donor data. So like how much did they donate, some more specifics around, you know, possibly like their, their income levels, um, their education levels, things like that, that are also then carried over to that CRM that we talked about earlier. And then you have that fundraising, um, like tracking and analytics. Um, so you can see, you know, how from the from a development standpoint or from a donation manager standpoint, how well uh, your different campaigns are doing. Some ways that this can benefit your nonprofit organization um, just gives you an easy way to, to, to collect donations. And we, we have it on, you know, kind of 24 seven. So if it is coming through your website, if it is coming through events, um, there's a way to, you know, you're kind of an, uh, an always on mentality to collect those donations. So if you send out a campaign uh, to make a request for someone to contribute, they might open that email in the middle of the night. This gives them the way to, to make sure that they can, they can make that donation right then and there. Um, or if you're running like a Facebook campaign or a fundraiser of some sort, being able to track that all back into one place. Um, so, you know, you could set up better peer-to-peer -peer fundraising um, online 24-7. Uh, you can reach more people. So by just having like, you know, physical events, physical, physical fundraisers, physical auctions, um, galas, things of that nature, you're sort of limiting yourself to um, just that that audience and who, who's able to show up that event um, through the through a donation platform, you're able to, to really branch out from there. Um, we've seen very successful campaigns that run very successful campaign, virtual campaigns, um, you know, in, in real time, but also that, that run over time, like over that sort of 24 seven life cycle um, that have raised hundreds of thousands and millions of dollars online that never would have been possible uh, if we, we'd stuck to uh, the in-person thing, especially as, as, as organizations evolved and have continued to evolve uh, during and following COVID. Uh, and and then sort of lastly is less paperwork. So, you know, before you have to deal with all those forms and um, all that administrative work behind processing donations and processing paper checks and things of that nature, having a donation platform in place allows you to cut down or cut out that paperwork. Uh, it also should make, you know, things like accounting uh, easy, a little bit more simple as you can just run a report instead of having to, you know, hand over a ledger or, you know, a, a series of checkbooks or bank statements. Uh, so quick statistics on online fundraising. Um, online giving made up about 8.7% 8, 8 of um, fundraising, all, all of all fundraising last year, which is a, is, a, is a great jump. I think in 2019, 2020, it was only about 2%. So it's becoming, uh, you know, it's a larger, uh, larger piece of the entire fundraising pie. And if you think about the, the traditional 
donations or the previous micro donations. Um, this is pretty big when, when, when you're looking at all fundraising, because fundraising can come from uh, things like large foundations um, or, or big grants. So the hundreds of thousands or million dollar grants. So when uh, online fundraising is making up you know, almost 10% of that at this point, that's, that's pretty impressive. 63% um, of donors interviewed through Blackwald and through 360 match um, surveys have said that they would prefer to give online with a credit card or a debit card. So you, you know, then you take advantage of security, convenience, um, and then again, back, back to the accounting and tracking things. And then about 40% of those um, who gave a gift have made multi-year gifts, right? So they would give something this year, they would give it again the next year. So now you've got kind of created some stickiness with them. And then monthly giving in the same year made up about almost 17%, but almost 20% uh, of all online revenue last year. So that's that recurring type of monthly giving um, or you know, at recurring asks for donations. Some donation platforms that um, you'll see available through TechSoup or some that, that we'd recommend. We'll, we'll hone in on, on, on um, give butter because it's kind of, it's one of the easier ones to get set up. It does integrate with all the tools we've talked about so far today, but there are tools like DonorBox, um, Fundly, and DonorPerfect. Some of these you might have heard of. Um, as, as Aretha said, or as Joe said, you know, we'll distribute these slides following the webinar. So you'll have, you know, access to, to, to link to these and or learn more about each of them. But when you're selecting a, a don donation management platform for your organization, some things you want to look at. You want to make sure it's something that's user friendly and adaptable. So, um, some of these have have some pretty pretty high price tags. Some of them you can get started for free, or just a percentage of um, donations that run through it. Um, just make sure that you're you're looking at more than just price. You know, you're looking at something that is user friendly that you or your development team or your donor donor team can can manage. Um, something that is adaptable. So adaptable within your organization, but also adaptable for your needs. So will it work with your website? Will it work with your um, you know, email marketing system? Will it work, integrate with your CRM? Or are you putting something that has a lot of bells and whistles in place, but it's gonna need a lot of manual intervention and manual connection. Um, so looking look at things like plugin support and integrations with you know, your current or, or planned uh, CMS or ecosystem there. Um, think about what your nonprofit needs specifically. So Again, we, we see it oftentimes people see like big shiny objects. They're like, oh, this is great. This has peer to peer fundraising and this has, you know, we can run a 5K through this and we can do these other things. But, you know, think about your organizational needs and if, if that's realistic for you all or if you need something a little bit more, um, a little bit more simple or simplified, it's going to meet your actual needs, not just the sort of pipe dreams that you might have for the future. Um, Security is is paramount, as we said. You know, donors want to give you or, or want to give, and they want to use their credit card, but they need to be sure that that there's some security in, involved there. And and then feel free to seek external advice if you're you're not sure about that. You know, we're here to answer those questions. There's a, a number of resources available directly through TechSoup to help compare uh, and, and answer some of these questions. And last but Probably most important, as I started to touch on, make sure it works with your CRM and your website. Make sure it integrates with that so you're not spending a bunch of time exporting from one system, trying to get it matched up to the other system or, or build complex um, integrations. Which leads us to integration, um, how these three pillars work together to help you grow uh, and scale your organization. So um, we think we see how people are looking at integration and the different tools that are available. So we're talking about the three pillars, but this really breaks down to like five different buckets. Um, there's content. So like, where is your content hosted? Where are you pushing it out through? There's the messaging. So how are you, you getting that message out? Um, is it, you know, through email marketing, through uh, live chat, through SMS messaging, things of that nature. There's the automation piece. So how do you reduce those manual tasks? How do you make sure that like you can set these things up one time and it'll continue to run uh, and grow with your organization, reporting, um, how do you put together a strategy, track that, track the performance of that strategy, and then make updates based on that, and then the data, so like, what, you know, what is happening, how are you managing that data, where is it, where do these things live? Um, when you're thinking about integration for these different tools, think about how each of these tools fits within all of these different pieces, or how, how does it, it serve or solve some of these different problems? Um, so, one of the, the power of really being able to integrate this thing is is to take advantage of that. So how can you make sure that you're 
uh, systems are sharing data from one platform to the other. So as I was mentioning in the donor management system, how do you make sure that that is actually integrated with your CMS and with your, um, your CRM? So you aren't spending time um, exporting things, matching up, trying to clean data up, um, and you're able to take advantage of the things like the uh, automations or um, operational efficiencies that, that live within those that connected platform. So if we go back to what we were talking about earlier, something like HubSpot sort of has that out of the box. And that's, this, um, you know, th those key features and functionality is what we're looking for. And you want to, to make sure it, you're capable of doing if you select these different platforms. So how does this work with your nonprofit? Uh, sort of the old way was we'd have the CRM data over here. So things like Salesforce, uh, maybe you're using the nonprofit su su uh, success pack on Salesforce or you're using some, uh, you know, a blackballed system that lives over here, has your CRM data in it. Maybe you have a donation platform over here. Or you just use PayPal um, with a donate button. Um, and then you have your marketing system. So that could either be something as simple as, as MailChimp or something like ActiveCampaign or ActOn. That was like the old way, right? The new way is having CRM powered marketing. So as we talked about the, you know, CRM at the basis of everything, um, having an integrated system, keeping that customer data integrated with all of your marketing and engagement is going to help, is going to keep this all connected, make your system, make your, your organization run more efficiently and keep it simple for you. It also allows you to have continuity. So as you're bringing on interns, bringing on volunteers, being able to train them and get them up to speed on one system is going to allow you to, you know, kind of get out of that day-to-day -day, um, a little bit faster if, if that's not what you, know, you should really be spending your time on. So there's some native integrations um, are, or native integrations are the things that kind of work out of the box. We're looking at different types of integrations. We're looking at what is native. So what works with this platform? So if I keep going back to like HubSpot, like what works, if I get HubSpot today, what systems can I connect to it with like, you know, the click of a button basically, or what's going to easily map data fields and things like that to this we're looking at those types of things and we're, we're gauging them on simplicity so like they're these are straightforward easy to set up you don't need a lot of technical expertise um, these are efficient so they're going to allow the date like someone else has already done the work to make sure that the data flows seamlessly between those systems if you think of something like um your accounting system and your CRM or your donation management platform. If these, if there's a native integration between those, you're not going to have to spend a bunch of time saying this field should map to this field, this field should map to that field, and so on. Uh, and then this allows for also also allows for deeper integration. So a native integration have, as I said, they, they, we've gone they've gone through um, a deep understanding of how the systems work and how they should ex be expected to work together. So you're not going to have to spend a bunch of time architecting and mapping that out. Uh, the other option would be third-party integration. So there'd be a way to tie two tools together that don't work together out of the box, so to speak. But there's a bunch of tools that are available. One that we like to use is called Zapier. There's other things like automate.io, uh, integrate.io, um, and other systems that, that will, will connect two systems together. Uh, what's nice about something like this is it gives you some versatility. So you know, it might not be something that works out of the box. You might not have seen it. There might not have been a developer on both sides that is, has spent the time um, thinking through everything. But with this, with these third-party integrations, you can get those systems talking to each other. So there's some versatility and flexibility there. Um, it's nice because you don't have to know how to code. There's no coding required with these things. So you don't have to go find a developer to create like a uh, an integration layer between the two systems or write API calls that say, hey, when this happens in this system, do this in this system. And automation is usually built into these uh, these tools. So uh, it allows you to save time on some of those, those um, redundant tasks um, that wouldn't be available sometimes through like a native integration. Uh, ultimately, some benefits of, the, of integrating your tech stack. I've, I've touched on this throughout this, but just to kind of recap, um, being able to personalize your engagement. So if these systems are talking to each other, what's happening in these dis different systems is also are also is also talking to each other. So you can in, you, know, you can influence engagement based on something that's happening. So an example would be, you know, new person comes in through the website, um, they they sign up for an event. Now they're in our system. We know they're interested in this event. We have some information about them. They're in our CRM. Uh, now we're able to make a request to them through our donation management system because the CRM and the donation management system are integrated and ask them to, you know, think about um, sponsoring that event. 
Maybe they, they clicked to, to become a sponsor. It goes back into the donation management system. We logged them in the CRM. Now we move them from being someone who um, was interested or just a stranger when they came in through the CMS through the website into the CRM, in the donation management platform, back to that CRM that says this person is now a, a donor, is now a supporter. So we can kick them off um, through like an email automation to, to know that in the future we can count on them for a donation so we can keep making requests. Um, and we can even tailor that that um, engagement to them to say, hey, thank you for your, your sponsorship during last year's event. Can we count on you again this year and make it really easy for them to click here and say yes. Um, that will obviously lead to time and resource savings. So you're not spending time manually going through um, doing those types of things, make, doing that type of outreach. You set it up one time, you set up the automation, you use the, the, uh, the data in that system to, audit, to, to, to decide who gets what and when, instead of, you have, instead of you or someone in your organization have to manually do that. And that's ultimately gonna enhance that donor journey. So it makes it faster, more efficient, more flexible, um, and gets them to, to be a supporter faster. Um, like I'll breeze through some of this stuff, but we, we've kind of, I've, taught, I've given you like the high level view of this, but at integration, what we really see the benefit of that is, is that, that automation. So enabling automation so that one of these, you know, these tools talking to each other can, can drive you down um, like a path like I just talked through. So something like, uh, you know, setting up a workflow in HubSpot that's going to have um, some, uh, uh, an action they took may, may, means that they should be added to this workflow to receive this email. Uh, and then we can continue to sort of like mine them through, through our system. So just some example slides that we'll share with you that will be shared with you just to show you like what this would look like. Uh, and you can see these steps that, that would previously be undertaken by, you know, an intern or, or you within your organization. So contact and roles at the very top of this, we create that record. Um, it might be like a donor record or uh, a donation record in the system. It updates a property value that says this person is a donor. This is the date they donated it on. And now we're, to, we're able to continue to do uh, to more of these steps instead of you spending the time doing all those updates, maybe exporting a report, updating data, importing that back into another system. So uh, we hope this kind of shows you how you can, you can take advantage of cost, resource, and time savings um, by integrating these systems and automating them together. Love this slide because it's super overwhelming. It shows you the thousands of different um, tools. But you know, if we keep going back to what we were talking about, you know, sort of a recommendation earlier, these are all the things that 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 at the time the slide was made um, were part of this HubSpot ecosystem. So all the tools that tie back into this, so you can really see like the sheer breadth and depth um, of a tool that that has integration uh, at the core uh, and, and how this could help and work with you in your organization. So just going outside of the three pillars we touched on today, here's some of just the examples of all the different um, integration options that are out there. Great, thanks Kyle. So that's that's a, a quick overview of, of tech stacks. We hope that was helpful and we'll, we'll have a Q&A immediately after this and, and we'll share the deck. Um, TAP Network, in partnership with TechSoup, we provide all of TechSoup's uh, members marketing and, and web support. I'll just quickly go through that to show you how we uh, how you can navigate to uh, to us through the website. It's uh, next slide, oh, previous slide. So yeah, if, you, if you're on TechSoup's website homepage anywhere, and you click on services, scroll down you'll see website services and digital marketing. That's uh, the partnership between TechSoup and, and TAP Network. And if you go to those pages, you'll see our, our, our different offerings and you can ask for a free consult. You can click right here or, or when you're on those pages, you'll, you'll see a form to ask for a free consult and our, our team can uh, answer specific questions for you, whether it's a tech stack or any other website development type uh, question you, you may have or need. So. I'm not going to go through all of our services. Um, one of the, the main services we have is digital marketing support. That starts at $3,500 a month. That's you know running full stack, full funnel campaigns. So helping you really get started on, on that element of what you're doing on the top of the funnel, all the social media, blogging, mid funnel, lead capture, bottom funnel, donations, event registration, things of that nature. 
tying them all together and, and managing your campaign. So we can talk you through that. And then the other uh, main offering, we have different types of website development. Uh, a lot of the clients we work with, we do over 300, work with over 300 nonprofits a year. We can start putting together custom websites and develop them for, for you folks. Um, full stack starting at around $15,000. Everyone's a little different, but just to give you a ballpark in, in terms of, you know, once you graduate from the starter websites that you may start with on Wix, et cetera, and then really need to scale and, and start building the tech stacks out and, and really driving those, those full funnel marketing campaigns, we, we can help there too. Um, and I think there's one more. Yeah, and a lot of clients, they, they may already have, you know, the website up and running and just might need some marketing or website development support services. So we have um, some, some cost-effective retainers starting at $4.99 a month, and we can help out that way. So I hope that's helpful. We're, we're here to help. Uh, I know we can't get through everything in, in a webinar, but if you want to contact us, we can talk through some of your specific challenges. And now we'll we'll go through some questions. Awesome. So I've answered I've answered a couple of questions uh, in the Q and A, but I'll, I'm going to run back through the chat for a little while. Um, feel free to to add any additional questions to either the Q and A section or um, or this chat. Um, so I wanted to say which website would be good if you wanted to add an online store. All these answers I'm going to give you today are are. are somewhat subjective, like to your organization and what your needs are. Uh, so I'll try to give, you know, a couple examples or answers for each. Um, Squarespace and Wix both have the option to add an online store. So depending on how many how many things you're going to sell, uh, they're a great, great way to get started. If you want to get more customized, I'd look into something like Shopify or um, WooCommerce, which is which lives on top of um, WordPress. Um, let's see, it says, uh, thoughts on Microsoft 365 Dynamics. Again, uh, that's specific to your organization. It is a very powerful CRM and tool, um, but you know, look at it in, in line with the rest of your technology and make sure it's going to integrate with those, with those different tools. If you are primarily using Microsoft um, for things like um, you know, SharePoint for um, you know, just general office and things of that nature. It integrates obviously out of the box with that very well. And TechSoup has a great program um, for Microsoft donations. So it's certainly one we we would um, look at, but again, make, make sure it works with the, with the rest of your, your initiatives. Um, let's see, what somebody said, one additional software tool is crucial, which is accounting. QuickBooks are very popular with nonprofits and affordable through TechSoup. Are there pros and cons of QuickBooks versus other software? So I, I think I've, I kind of glazed over that a little bit, but um, we do think, you know, the CRM, the donation management platform uh, and, the, and the content management system, if you have, if you are taking payments um, through that, um, as, we, as we mentioned, like in one of the, a couple of the examples, like they do, you do want to think about how that, that, what that, what that impact is on the rest of your, your tech stack or ecosystem and QuickBooks or, um, or an accounting system would be that. Um, I know the QuickBooks, QuickBooks Online would be the one I would look at as far as like, does it integrate and how does it integrate? Um, because you have you know access to to just pass data back and forth and it, it is super scalable. Uh, as this person said, um, there are some great programs through TechSoup that off that for QuickBooks. So um, definitely one we would we would uh, we would recommend. Another one that that um, that we've seen success with in the past, I think it's called Zero X E R O. Um, I'm not sure if that's one that that is supported here, but there there are a number of integrations that are available through that. Someone else mentioned that Kilo is a great all-in-one CRM. Absolutely, we've um, seen clients use that, help clients on that platform um, in the past. It's just you know, it's just not as widely supported as some of the ones we've covered today. Uh, let's see, um, is it? Easy to transfer to a new system, whether it's CRM, if we have a different one we are currently using. Again, subjective to what you're what you're working with already and what you're trying to grow to. Um, it should be possible uh, if if your data is clean, structured well, and it's it's similar to what it would 
be in that new system or if you can kind of create like a translation of sorts of what that would look like then yes it should be pretty easy to use also depending on the system there are some where there's just you know kind of one click migrations not one click like you can't just go and click it but like it's very basic it's very straightforward you know you kind of click through and say this field maps to this field this this data type maps to this data type um so that would be it could be pretty easy depending on what that is feel free to reach out and ask us about those we can uh, answer some of those questions for sure um, on different platforms um let's see um, I see some people answered these questions in here so uh, will we get a copy of the recording? Yes, this will be sent out to everyone today. I saw somebody actually answered that, so just talked. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. I currently have donor box. I like it, but just heard of a new one called Zephy that apparently does not change any charge any fees, and you get the whole donation amount. Have you heard of this? Uh, I haven't specifically. It's not that's really not in my wheelhouse, so to speak. But um, I would just read the fine print on on how you know every organization is making money in some way so they're either getting um, something from the person paying so you know when you're looking at making a request there are platforms that allow I mean if anybody's you know donated on something like um I'm trying to think of the platform some of the platforms that do this I know I think give butter allows you to do it um, but they also cover a certain amount of of the fees um I think classy does as well but like you want to look at a platform that allows you to shift that fee to the the donor if they would if they'll take that on and I, I think you'll find in many cases they will uh it just needs it's just a, a matter of how you present that like what that user experience looks like so if you say hey Joe would you uh consider contributing $50 to our organization and then when they go to check out there's always there's, there'd be a little a little option that says you know, will, will you cover the fee or the, the 2% or the, whatever the percentage of that fee is um, so that, you know, our nonprofit can can take in the, the entire amount. Um, let's see. Uh, a couple of people asked about HubSpot, like, is there, does TechSoup offer HubSpot? Uh, there, was, there was a program um, between TechSoup and HubSpot. I think HubSpot's changed the way that they, they sell to nonprofits. Um, so, so we're happy to share, I can share a link uh, following this or with you all uh, in a follow-up email that will take you directly to that nonprofit program. Um, so you can kind of get right into that and have those questions answered. There are great discounts for nonprofit organizations on HubSpot, but also depending on what your needs are, there's also like a, a, a there are free tools through HubSpot uh, that can kind of help you get started. Uh, as we mentioned in, one, in, in some of these slides earlier, when you look at these things, look at things are that are going to scale with your organization and are going to scale, um, you know, at the same sort of rate that you that you want to scale. So if you have a small database right now, you're not doing a lot of marketing, um, you're not doing a lot of donation requests, you know, one, a few a year, you could probably get started on something, a tool like HubSpot's like free version. What's nice about HubSpot is like it has the versions that can grow with you. If you look at other tools, um, that might they might fit your need right now. So, so to these people that are asking about like, can I migrate from one system to the other? You probably don't want to get yourself in a situation where that's going to have to happen if you grow, especially if you grow rapidly. So look for something that works now, and maybe they have like different tiers um, that you can grow with as you add complexity um, or contacts down the line. Um, anything else? If not. Uh... Give you guys a few minutes of your day back and, and we'll follow up with a recording here and some of the links we talked about should just be right directly in these slides have a great day everybody thanks everyone take care thanks, everyone.